In this video, we want to take just a few minutes and prove to ourselves that eigenvectors that are associated with distinct eigenvalues um, are literally independent. So that's what we'll do here in this video. Um, the playlist for this and all the other series is at the website digital-university.org. So let's say that we have a square matrix n by n and let's say that the matrix has an m number of distinct eigenvalues where m is less than n. And for the repeated eigenvalues, if, for example, you saw in some of our previous videos now where we had a, a an eigenvalue of 1, and it was repeated a couple of times, but for this eigenvalue of 1, there was more than one eigenvector associated with that. And then when you have that repetition, or you have a, an eigenvalue like this, a single value, but more than one eigenvector associated with it, those eigenvectors are literally independent in that repeated case. And again, we discussed that in the previous videos. But here, let's say that we have distinct eigenvalues, lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, lambda 4, on out to lambda m. And each one has an eigenvector associated with it. Like this. These eigenvectors are linearly independent. And that's what we want to prove in this video is why. And to do that, it's a bit of a, a devious um, technique, I guess, and that the typical way is to consider these eigenvalues and assume the opposite, assume that they are linearly dependent. So we have a group of eigenvectors. If they're linearly dependent, not linearly independent, then that means that Somewhere in this group, there's at least one eigenvector that's a linear combination of the rest of them. So let's say that we're going along and we're testing out the eigenvectors. We take the first one, then take the second one, and see that, yes, indeed, they are linearly independent. Take a third one. It's linearly independent. Take a fourth one. It's linearly independent. And we come out here, say, at here, and this one is not linearly independent, meaning that this one is some combination of these previous eigenvectors. So that would mean then that these here are v1, v4, up to vk minus 1, these are linearly independent. And vk itself is not linearly independent. It's some combination of these. So we're assuming that here in our whole set, not all of them are linearly independent. Now here we're assuming that here it's vk is the first one that we encounter that indeed is not literally independent, it is some combination of these. So then we would say, well then this vector vk, I'm not going to put the bar on the vectors, but these are all vectors, that vk is some combination of these. like this. Now, it doesn't have to be a combination of all of them. Some of these Cs that we have in here might be zero. We might have maybe eight vectors here, and it's only a combination of maybe 
5 of the 8, or 3 of the 8, or 7 of the 8, so that the components of this vector aren't components of all of these, but it will be of some of them. So some of these C's in here will be 0, others will be non-zero. Now, we're going to do two things with this equation. The first thing we'll do is multiply the equation both sides by matrix A. And the second thing we'll do is multiply both sides by the eigenvalue associated with this lambda k. Let's do the first step first. We're going to multiply both sides of this by matrix K. So we have A VK equals C1 A V1 plus C2 A V2 plus C3 A V3 plus C K minus 1 a times V K minus 1. So it just took this equation and modified both sides of it by matrix A. Now these are eigenvectors, so A times eigenvector VK, that's the same thing as lambda K times eigenvector VK. AVK is lambda K times VK. And that equals C1. This would be lambda 1 V1. Plus C2. This would be lambda 2 V2. These are eigenvectors. Plus C3 lambda 3 V3. And continuing along to the end, C K minus 1, lambda K minus 1, V K minus 1. So, we had this equation, multiply both sides by matrix A, and we end up with this expression. The other thing that we said that we were going to do with this equation is multiply both sides of it by lambda sub k. So let's do that. We're going to have on this side lambda k vk. Multiplying both sides of this equation by lambda k. Lambda k times vk equals C1 lambda k v1 plus C2 multiplying both sides of this equation by lambda k we have lambda k here lambda k v2 plus C3 lambda k v3 and continuing on, CK1, lambda K, VK, minus 1. So, we had this equation, multiplied both sides of it by matrix A, it gave us this equation. Took this equation, multiplied both sides of it by lambda sub K, it gave, gives us this equation. Now we're going to subtract this equation from this one. So you have lambda k vk minus lambda k vk, that's zero. So we have zero equals this minus this is zero, and here we will have c1 v1 times lambda k minus lambda 1. Go ahead along here. You will have C2V2 
lambda k minus lambda 2. Continuing with this term, we'll have C3V3 lambda k minus lambda 3. times C3V3. And we have this term at the end. I'm not going to write it down because I don't have enough room, but it continues on in that same pattern. But look what we have. We have 0 equals this times C1V1 plus 0 this C2V2 plus this C3V3. So you have 0 equals this times C1V1 plus this C2V2 plus this C3V3. We have that going all along. Well, these are distinct eigenvalues, so they're all different. So this right here is not 0. This is not 0. This is not 0. So the only way then that this whole expression can be equal to 0 is that all of these C's here, 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 and all the rest of that we have, all of those C's must be equal to 0. That's the only way that this expression here can come out to be equal to 0. But we have to go back to here the way that we got this equation, we have to go back now and think about this. We had a series of eigenvectors. Well, we had an even larger series here. And we're assuming that they are linearly dependent. So then we imagine going along, testing them. This is linearly independent. This one is linearly independent. This one is literally independent. Here is the first one we found that was literally dependent. Again, we're assuming now that these are not literally independent. We're assuming they're literally dependent. And we're assuming that, aha, here's the first one in the series that is some combination of these other ones, which gave us this expression. But now, in this expression, for this to be true, for this vector to be some linear combination of all of these, that means then that not all of these C's can be 0. Some of them have to be non-zero. It might be this might be a linear combination maybe of three of these in here. Or maybe there might be 10 altogether, but it might be a linear combination of only six of them. But here, we're getting down to this step, and we're saying, oh no, all the constants here have to be 0. So we're having a contradiction here. The contradiction was arising from our assumption that we have eigenvectors and we can have some in our set that are literally that are linear combinations of the other ones. In other words, we can have a set of eigenvectors and some of them are going to be linearly dependent. But if we make that assumption, giving us this equation. But then we see we just do two simple things to the equation. Multiply both sides by matrix A to give this expression. Multiply both sides by lambda K to give this equation. Subtract the two. We have 0 equals this expression. But the only way that this can be true is for all the constants to be 0. But that's in contradiction to our assumption here. So what happens is that when we make the assumption that when you have a set of eigenvectors, 
belonging to distinct eigenvalues, you make the assumption that they can have linearly dependency. They're not all going to be linearly independent. When we make that assumption, it leads to a contradiction. So our initial assumption was wrong. So in this set here of linearly indi of, of uh, eigenvectors belong to distinct eigenvalues, there is no one or more of one in there that are linearly dependent because it leads to this contradiction here. Therefore, our conclusion is that all of these eigenvectors here must be linearly independent. And that's the proof, and it's, like I say, it's a bit of a convoluted one because we want to prove we want to prove that these are linearly independent. We do it by assuming the opposite, assuming no, they're not linearly independent, assume they're linearly dependent, work with that assumption, see how it generates a contradiction, therefore conclude that our initial assumption was wrong. They are not linearly dependent. All of these are linearly independent. And that's how the proof goes. So it's an interesting approach. We thought we'd show it to you and see what you think of it. Uh, this will probably be the last proof that we will ever have. For all the videos here, we're trying to um, develop an intuitive approach. But this one was a clever enough proof that we thought we'd put it out there and um, so you could see it for yourself. OK, that's it for this video. Um, join us for some more videos, and we'll try and get back and solve some more um, specific problems.